Hello, welcome to my channel. How are you doing today? I mean your guy, Ernest Adibayo Okoje, Okoje Science Media. Today, we shall be discussing a lot of things ranging from the saga between the federal government and the NLC with respect to foil pump price increments. And we shall also be looking at if Sean Kuti had the right to slap a police officer, which in my view, you could slap a police officer. And uh, so please don't go away. So let's start with, you know, the subsidy saga. Sinubu made a terrible mistake by announcing subsidy removal on the 29th of May. I don't know if this was the, if this is a symptom or a sign of what it is to come in the next four years of his administration. On the day of your inauguration, without following scripts written by professors and other intelligent people around you, you decided to cancel in the, um, subsidy by saying subsidy is gone. And if we are not mistaken, Buhari subsidy is supposed to end by June. So what will happen to the money, the trillions and the billions of naira, you know, that have been set aside for subsidy? And now, if we even want to look at the double standard played by the government, we know that Dangote's refinery was only about 80% completed before it was commissioned by Buhari's administration. Why the rush? Now, so, uh, the, the subsidy was not supposed to go away until maybe Dangote's refinery is completed. And from my estimate now, Dangote's refinery will be completed by December. If it will be completed by December, why the rush to remove subsidy or why the rush to commission something? And now, until that ship is coming, I bought fuel for as high as um, I, I started buying for 500, but now I, I, I bought for 550. I don't know how long that will continue. So it's just a very terrible thing. And now when we look at that with respect to minimum wage, minimum wage is 30,000 naira, and uh, 50 liters of fuel is um, about 30,000 naira. Can you just imagine? So with a salary, you can only buy 50,000, you can only buy uh, what's it called now, 50 liters of fuel. And uh, if governments, and I like any other stand on uh, on the matter, if federal government is going to remove the minimum, the um, subsidy, which is even scam in the first place, because there's no research in a subsidy, you know, then NLC has right to also increase, to ask for increments in minimum wage. This is how I see it. Now, federal government will be saying, oh, if we remove the minimum wage, if we remove the subsidy, the money goes into other sectors of the economy. And uh, that if the money is pumped back into salary increments, then it means that the government will still be borrowing money to fund salaries, which is recurrent um, expenses. But this is the gimmick. Subsidy, the reason why federal government even said subsidy didn't favor the poor was that when federal government subsidizes fuel and a um, pump um, price is at um, between 190 and 220, what happens is that um, the same government cabal will come and buy millions of liters and send them outside of the country to countries like Niger, Chad, and so. And now, government has already implicated itself in that government is saying that it is not capable or competent enough to secure our borders. Now, let's even now say, okay, we, 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 we pretend like we are not saying that. And now, this money that is going out, this money that is going out is actually, um, um, this fraud that is going out is by the rich. And so, when the subsidy is removed, you know, the rich will suffer more because the rich have, like, maybe 10 cars, 5 cars, so they will be spending more. And it will not really affect the poor. And the people that are making money from it, they are considering of what pump product outside of the country will not make such profit again, then it's still fine. So increase it to 500, they won't be able to do it because it will not encourage them to send it out of the country or have so many cars and they're expecting to be buying fuel anyhow. But put this money now, since the money was not coming to the poor in the first place, since the rich people would take this money out of the, um, uh, take this poor out of the country and the money goes to their pocket, let this money become the salary of the poor people. So if the poor are getting money, the money is no longer going to the rich and then the poor will be able to live better lives. But uh, economic experts will come and start talking about um, such things as um, inflation and all of that. So we help with inflation. When this money is being stolen by this rich, there was no such talk about inflation. So let the money get to the hands of the poor. Let them be able to live, you know, meaningful life. How can somebody be earning 30,000 naira per month? What will it do? What will it do? That there is no more vehicle uh, or transport fare for as low as 15 naira again. It's from 100 naira and above. You know, a place that's just about uh, 4 kilometers now because the road is not so good. They are collecting 300 naira before it used to be 100 naira. And when there was first scarcity um, some time ago, some months ago, it became 200. Even when the foil pump came down a little bit again to around that 200, it didn't come down from 100, from 200 to 100, you know. And, uh, and at that time, we buy petrol for I think 180 or so, and then they moved it up and it became in some place 190 something, 220 in other places. And now, those people increased it by 100 naira. And now they doubled the fair, the, the, the foil pump price, and those guys still have, you know, further increased it to 300 naira. How will people cope? You know, how about people, if it's okay, people should be trekking, how about people who have um, health challenges who may not be able to trek, like people who are either physically challenged or have some form of ailments in their body that will not make them, you know, go to the strain of trekking. You know, governments should actually consider that. It's just an unfortunate thing, thing because we all know that um, Peter B or Article 2 would have removed subsidy, but the way Tinubu went about it was pure nonsense, purely nonsensical. Now, he's talking about palliatives. Now, you should have palliatives on ground before 
before you even increase for not after you, you remove uh, first subsidy and you're not saying okay palate is now the eight hundred billion dollars the eight hundred million dollars of worry collector what have they done with it we know that it will go into the hands of the few again but people may say okay let's give Tinubu a chance because um Tinubu has not been um, um, um tested before so we shouldn't just think that the incompetence of the previous administration Buari's administration will cascade down Buari and Tinubu that Tinubu um Tinubu's wife was there to have said that uh, we do not need Nigerians money to survive that's another lie now Tinubu's that's in Tinubu's wife Four months ago, was saying that she wanted to borrow two million naira from Shetima. So if I borrow two million from Shetima, what are you saying? And in the same amount, you are saying you don't need Nigerian money to survive. The the renovations that will be done at, in Aso Rock, the, the the cost of running governance on your part and um, Tinobu's part, the office of the first lady that definitely would have an office of the uh, uh, first daughter. You know, first ladies usually fund pet projects like um, women initiative, youth, children, and all of that. And we had Tinobu's daughter, who has now proclaimed herself to be the Yaloja of Nigeria, saying that um, uh, 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 our office or she wants to venture into all of all those. So does it now mean that Tinobu will have office of the first lady and office of the uh, uh, first daughter? Because this will be funded by government's money. The travels, the tours, the um, medical <laughs> tours that Tinobu will be going on, you know, the UK and Spain and France, we all know that it will be funded by government money. The, 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 the large family, you know, the kind of... Uh, political empire at Tinubu has created with his family, his son, his children, his son's friends, and that kind of cabal. They all will be funded. Activities in that sort of will be funded by government money. So they should not come and deceive any of us. We can continue to uh, remain uh, foolish in the eyes of everything going on in our country. And then finally, our governors are always shouting they should move subsidy. We know why they want that. Because if they remove subsidy, you know, the money that is borrowed from outside will come to them and then. But the protest governors will be telling you do not increase minimum wage. If now you are getting an allocation of, let's say, uh, 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 3 billion per month and now subsidy is gone and government increases your money to like maybe 4.5 billion or 6 billion or 5 billion wouldn't it be fair for you to also increase the workers money in your state and they'll say no they can't cope even some states are still owing um, workers because of the last minimum wage that was raised from 18,000 to 30,000 naira. that's nonsense that money should be used to cater for the poor you know or it should go into other social um, um, social uh, or welfare packages, or uh, maybe like they should fund electricity, they should fund education. It's just a, a rather unfortunate thing. And now they are saying they're trying to blackmail uh, NLC that NLC is partisan, uh, supporting the, the Labour Party. Of course, NLC, NLC, um, uh, the Labour Party comes from NLC and it's supposed to be a socialist party that will cater for the poor and the workers. So, what do you expect them to say? If the Labour Party is guaranteeing that they will meet all the demands of NLC, then NLC should openly support the Labour Party. So, the fact that NLC is now going on, uh, embarking on, uh, threatening to go on a strike does not mean that uh, people will come and start blackmailing them because these same people who, who blackmail them or the people they use as their foot soldiers in this blackmail and the people who are also suffering the pangs of this economic hardship brought, a, brought about by the APC, the um, previous APC government and this new one, incoming one now setting the ball rolling on the one by saying that um, um, subsidy is gone. It's just rather an unfortunate thing. And then um, let's move on to other aspects of uh, today's discussion. Yes. One, two, three, go. Yes. People are saying um, Sean Kuti slapped the police officer. What is wrong if you slap a police officer? I've seen in America, people slap police officers, people fight with police officers. Eventually, they are arrested though, and they are prosecuted and all of that. I've seen the same police officers carrying handbags for politicians' wives. And I've seen a politician's wife, not even a politician at the top level, like local government level, slapping the hell out of a police, a, 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 a soldier man. You know? So all these things are captured on camera every time, everywhere. We've seen drunk police officers, you know, being manhandled, their guns will be taken from them, mocking them, they'll be on the ground rolling, and these guns will be seized from them. There, there was one video that went viral like two years ago. That was a police officer. So if a police officer is drunk and the police officer rams my vehicle at the back, and you know, and that thing can skid, can make my vehicle skid off Ted Milan Bridge and into the lagoon, then I have right to slap some sense into the police officer's head. Besides, the police officer was not holding a gun. So if the police officer is not holding a gun, and it's not in a, 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 in a in its correct state of mind, you know, you have the right to slap him because police officers should also undergo uh, psychiatric evaluation. If someone drives rough now in Lagos and you are apprehended by the um, um, uh, road safety or those other ones are forgotten them that wear uh, yellow top and um, 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 is it a pink, um, purple um, trousers, they will tell you to go for psychiatric evaluation. Many of these police officers have serious mental disorders that's just the truth a police officer that would see you there was one that i was driving in my village 
and um, I had this um, this small cutlass. This one's they use in secondary schools to clear grass in my boots. And police officer stopped me and said that uh, yes, that what am I using with cutlass? That and uh, do I know that uh, uh, this is uh, incriminatory? That blah 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 will go to station. I was like, are you all right? You just know that you are perpetrating falsehood. You know it's a lie. But just because you want to collect money from me, you know that this person you are talking to is a sensible person. I won't tell you come. I'm a PhD in view person, so you are not a lay person. You can think you can just come and bully and intimidate. But he didn't care. Was still insisting and all of that and all of that. So, but it was later he realized that the the guy that was driving my car didn't have driver's license. So that was what he now um, 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 focused on. And eventually, he still started us and he got something from the man. You know. But what I'm trying to say is that this guy was looking me in the face and telling me point blank that that thing could be used. That since. The, uh, the, 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 there was um, the issue of um, 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 kidnappers, headmen, you know, operating in that area that I, 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 I by virtue of me having that kind of um, cutlass, I can't even cut a goat that um, I, 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 that, uh, it, it, it's incriminatory and that um, I could be arrested for it. So that kind of police person now needs to go for a psychiatric evaluation. So it's not good to actually slap people who are in uniform, but I'm just trying to play the devil's advocate here that yes, if someone who is drunk rams my car from behind and still coming to provoke me in my face, I can give the person a dirty slap. But thank God the guy was not holding a gun because if, if he were holding a gun, he probably would have shot the... He would have probably would have shot um, uh, Sean Kuti dead and um, it would have been something else we are saying. So that's why it's not good to actually challenge police officers. But we've seen many of them being slapped by politicians and other people. And we've seen police people being beaten, blue black. And it will be recorded. Why is this Sean? Is it because uh, Sean is um anti-government and anti of course Sean even came on um, television to be saying some kind of rubbish that um it's peter obi put that setting them that's nonsense i'm a die-hard supporter of peter obi even after the election i'm still you know um i'm, I'm still showing my support for peter obi and all of that and uh, if the court says that peter obi will become the next president so be it and if it's Timbu that will remain no wahala we have to give Timbu our support too all of us want this country to be good, but he should not be going there to be saying that Peter Obi will set him up because he is saying that, of course, because he didn't support Peter Obi and that um, um, uh, people are happy that um, um, he's facing his predicament. He caused it uh, himself, so Peter Obi has nothing to do with it, and he should just keep Peter Obi's mouth, uh, name out of his mouth, and focus on um, things that are making us like him. Because I know that, of course, even now that people are thinking um, he's pro APC, it's a lie. He's not supporting Tinubu anyway. This same guy will come on television to blast the hell out of Tinubu. So, if this is what it is, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And um, with this, I'm signing out. Please, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share this video um, to friends and family, and come to support us in these um, ways. So, we'll continue to give you quality content. Signing out once again, Kojia Science Media. See you next time.